Welcome back to Statue Fanatic. I'm Calvin, and today I'm going to do the much overdue room tour. It's going to be uh, like two rooms that we're going to take a look at, and um, I'm going to start off here and give you guys an idea of what it looks like when I come up to the uh, entertainment room where we hang out at and um, where the first part of my collection is. So, stay tuned. So, as you come upstairs, you can kind of see that I have a couple of detox here and um, there's our little comfy couch there and uh, where we kind of hang out, watch tons of movies, play video games, all that kind of stuff and um, kind of taking a look around. You can kind of get an idea of what it looks like when I'm actually sitting in here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to raise the lights and kind of go over the things that I um, want to show you guys. Got quite a few things. And some of them are statues, some of them are figures. Um, I've got a pretty eclectic collection of things. So stay tuned. Now that we got the uh, lights up and uh, we can see a little bit better, I'm going to start over here. And uh, I'm actually going to start with this figure right here. Because um, we talk a lot about heroes and all those types of things. And I just wanted to share a figure of my real life, if you will, hero, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., this is a um, piece that came out a couple of years ago. I saw it online. I saw somebody reviewing it. And um, it actually came with quite a few things. It came with his um, iconic trench coat that I have here, his suit, hat, and even a Bible that actually has little writing in it that you can actually see scripture in it. The podium here is actually sold separately. So that was something I had to get uh, separate. And uh, here it's uh, the it says right here, Martin Luther King Jr., January 15th, 1929 to April 1968. And this is a depiction of the, the March on Washington. Um, what's really cool about this, too, is it actually has a little thing in the back where you can turn it on. And it actually plays the entire I Have a Dream speech. So I wanted to start my little collection tour with this guy because it just means so much to me all right so now let's get started we're gonna walk back here and start over here with a few uh actual figures and toys here so i'm a big destiny fan and so what i have here is a pretty neat collection of figures put out by mcfarland by uh todd mcfarland toys and um of the hunter and the titan and uh lord saladin those guys Pretty neat collection here. And then here they released uh, <clears throat> some pops of those figures as well. So I have the collection of pops for them. And um, yes, I even have a life-size uh, Gallahorn over there in the corner. So that's my collection of um, Destiny figures. Moving back over here, you guys saw me do a video of these guys. These are the uh, NECA turtles, the quarter, quarter scale turtles from, um, from NECA. And um, this is kind of where their home is. I don't have any else, anywhere else to put them, so they kind of hang out up here. Not too bad. And so moving on down here, we have a statue of Pitt um, from Image Comics and Grifter. Both of these were sculpted by um, Clayburn Moore, who back in and I got these back in the '90s. And so back then he was a pretty big sculptor, especially when it came to figures from Image and um, like Top Cow. And down here, these are three other figures that he sculpted. This is uh, in the back, you see Witchblade and then you also see the darkness. And in the back there, you see Lady Death. These were three figures that I got in the early of the mid nineties as well. And then going down here, I have various things. My favorite animated, stop animated, whatever you want to call it, is The Nightmare Before Christmas. So in the back there, those are actual figures from 1993 from the uh, toy line that came out. And this was a, um, the statue of Jack and Sally is an exclusive, I think, Disney Store statue. And then I have some more figures down there. Um, the um, snow globes and that type of stuff from um, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Interestingly enough, the movie didn't do that well when it first came out because I guess kids didn't want... Uh, parents didn't want their kids to be traumatized by Santa Claus getting sadistically beaten by Lock, Shock, and Barrel. But since then, it's become a 
merchandising uh, licensing powerhouse. And here we have uh, the Max, the MTV show character. Um, um, this also was sculpted by Claiborne Moore. And I got this back in the 90s as well. And here's a Savage Dragon. I think that's Eric Larson's. And um, also sculpted by Claiborne Moore. Now, down here, some really cool figures. Neat story behind this. I'm a really big Universal Monsters fan. And um, interestingly enough, these figures that you see here uh, that are not in the uh, packaging, these are Sideshow figures. When Sideshow first started, they their biggest license was Universal Monsters. And they even marketed it to stores like, you know, Tar Target or whatever. You could buy those figures. And I think these figures from the 1990, from 1990, I think. And then in the back you have, from 1980, you have the Rimco tiny 4-inch scale um, monsters. They're carded. A friend of mine gave me this back in 1990 because he knew how much I liked Universal Monsters. And uh, he bought these figures for me, and I've had them ever since then. It's nearly almost 30 years. And so with that, we'll move over here to one of the main displays that I have. And I've taken a few pictures of this and I did a review of the Mad Titan. And so I have the display here with the print from Sideshow Thanos and the Gal Galactus maquette. And also displaying it with the uh, graded Infinity Gauntlet as well as the Infinity War. And that Iron Man, that's just a uh, NECA quarter scale Iron Man. Continuing down to uh, the bottom display here, the rest of my cosmic setup there. I've got uh, Thor and Miss um, Marvel, Captain Marvel, Gamora. Got uh, change this so we can get that glare out of here. Got Angela, and in the back there, I've got her first appearance in Spawn number nine, and um, Doctor Strange XM piece. These, um, yeah, the other three are sideshow pieces, of course. Now we're going to move on over to what's up here. Now, I reviewed this guy on the right, um, Deathwing, from um, World of Warcraft. Pretty awesome figure. I've been wanting to get that dragon for so long. I don't even play the game, but I wanted it so long, and it was always more than I was willing to pay for it. And uh, came across this guy who was selling his collection of statues and ended up selling that to me for less than retail, which was pretty awesome. And then over here, this is a figure actually from McFarlane of Spawn, which is a great pose. I love this figure. And I do not understand why McFarlane does not get into the statue game. Even some of his figures are so detailed, you kind of wish they were statues. And then going back down in the detail, another NECA set. This is a... Simple diorama of the uh, crow, the remember the rooftop fight. Um, and then down here, got a couple of more pieces of the crow. And um, the one on the left is a is Eric Draven as a crow, uh, Hot Toys figure. And then in the center there is a 18 inch NECA figure, which is pretty awesome. I love that figure. And then to the right here, you have Another figure that came out in the mid 90s that I got of uh, Eric Draven as the crow. And then going down here, got another Hot Toys. This is Robocop with the insane amount of accessories that came with this setup. And further down here, we got a Twitter headpiece. This is Batwoman. Um, I had all of those at one point, I either gave them away or something like that. And but that's the only one I have left from that now. Now, over here is my gaming section, again, with more games. This is from um, 3A Toys. These are three 12-inch um, figures of uh, the Warlock, the Titan, the Hunter from uh, Destiny, from Destiny 1. And these figures are incredible. I mean, they did an amazing job. Tons of detail on the fig, tons of details on the figure. Um, and it came with a ton of guns and accessories, some of the iconic guns from the game, you know, like the Icebreaker there, the Thorn, Fatebringer, all those guns came with it. Pretty awesome stuff there. And then going down here, we've got a few more pieces. The Uncharted 3 is another sideshow piece, actually. 
Uh, it's a mini statue there. And then the one on the left, the infamous, that's uh, a Sony Direct, I think, piece. And then the back, Second Son, another video game that I like playing them. Kind of bummed that they haven't come out with a new one anytime soon. And then we have Vault Boy here from Fallout. And uh, it's actually a statue with a bobblehead on it. The next one is from First Four Figures. This is Link, um, Breath of the Wild, and um, another Link statue there from Zelda. And then finally down at the bottom, this really cool statue came with a, um, a game, Assassin. I thought this was a really, really cool statue. Um, I think I got the game just to get the statue. Now, moving over here on top, we've got a couple of NECA figures that I haven't taken out of the box yet, Doctor Strange and Deadpool, which I'll take them out at some point because I don't pretty much leave anything in the boxes. And then here, we've got Ghost Rider, maquette figure from uh, Sideshow on Throne. That seems to be the thing now, but this was before it was a thing. And then here, got some really cool figures. What you hear there is the killing joke on the left, which is a Kotobukiya statue. It is, I think, for it's a PVC piece, but it is amazing. The detail and sculpt in this thing is awesome. So what you hear is this light keeps going off because it has a sensor in it and it knows that I'm standing here. And so it's making the sound of uh, the Joker taking a picture. And so in the back, you have Batgirl and... Uh, the latest statue um, from, I think, is Diamond Direct, The Killing Joke. It's never gone off that much. <laughs> and then in the back, I have a, a, a rated version of the actual comic, The Killing Joke, where Barbara Gordon gets crippled by the Joker. And then down here, I recently reviewed this smaller statue, which is of Psylocke, sculpted by Alejandro Piera. And I love this piece. She's beautiful. And down here, this actually is a setup that was given to me by a friend. I was the best man in his wedding, and this was the gift that he gave me for that. It was pretty cool. Um, pretty cool gift. Pretty excited about that. Now, over here, I have a detolf, but I basically use this to just store... Um, the extra pieces I could put them in the box but then it's just a pain in the butt to go dig out something out of a box to uh, put it on so I decided to do this until I come up with a better waiting to display to store them but so far this works pretty well so if I ever just want to change the head sculpt or something is a lot easier to do because I can see them all now we're going to head into the other room which is Kind of my main collected room here. This is kind of where I do a lot of the videos from that you see. I just give a once around and then I'll get the lights up so that we can see better. Um, what we have there. Now that we've kind of taken a look around the room, I'm gonna go ahead and get the lights up so that we can see better. So this is the XM's Ghost Rider. I mean, what can you say? It's just a really epic piece. Um, incredible sculpt artwork. Everything that went into this piece is just phenomenal. But the motorcycle, I'm not gonna make this a review video, just a statue room tour, but that's one of those that just stand out. And in the back there, there's the um, graded um, first appearance of Johnny Blaze as Ghost Rider. And then going down on my little Spider-Verse 
um, display here. I've got Spider-Man here over to the left. This is a Gentle Giants piece that I reviewed not too long ago. Pretty cool light up feature. The crosswalk in the lamp actually lights up and behind it is Amazing Spider-Man 300 which is of course the full first appearance of Venom. And then in the middle you've got this epic bus from uh, XM which is an amazing piece. Absolutely love this and very limited too. I think there's only like 250 of these guys. Pretty awesome. And then over here is the companion piece of the Spider-Man I just showed you. This is um, a Gentle Giant's Venom uh, that came out at the same time as the Spider-Man and it's a really awesome piece. What's unique about this, it's a complete sculpted statue uh, but it doesn't have a base. His feet, act, his feet um, serve as the base. It's pretty awesome. And now behind it, of course, is Secret Wars number eight, the first appearance of the now famous uh, symbiote that we know as Venom. And uh, going down here, we have a fan favorite, and this is uh, Kota Bakia's Eric Sosa's um, Venom, one of the best sculpts out there. Uh, for a smaller scale statue, this is just amazing. Uh, I think it's better than some of the larger scale sculpts of Venom for sure. And then here, it's a pretty interesting piece. This is a McFarlane posed Spider-Man from NECA. It's a limited wall relief piece. I think there's like only less than a thousand of these. Um, I really like it a lot. It's pretty cool. And um, here we have Venom Rebirth. I just did a review of this. This just came out, sculpted by Alex Alexandra Alejandra Piera. Um, I'm gonna get that name right at one time or another. But anyway, this is a really cool piece as well. And then going down here, we've got, um, I think Eric Sosa did this, I don't know, but this is a Kota Bakia piece as well that goes with the Eric Sosa Venom up there. There's a Spider-Man um, Eric Sosa uh, Kota Bakia piece that goes with that line that I want really bad, but the price is just so astronomical for such a small scale figure. But it's a beautiful piece, and I think this is a um, Eva Marvel Miles, and I think this is a Marvel Milestone or a Marvel uh, Diamond Direct piece. Pretty cool Venom there. And then uh, the Boeing piece that I have here. There's a couple other Venom pieces that I want to get. I want to get a, wanna, another Boeing piece Venom. Now taking a look over here, we have Superman PF from Sideshow, the exclusive edition. Right next to him, we've got Batman and Wonder Woman. I wish I had a different Wonder Woman, but um, that's the PF I have for right now. And of course, Green Lantern, PF, and Aquaman, and guess who's missing? Flash. What's up, Sideshow? We need a Flash. And then we've got uh, Heath Ledger uh, Joker. I love this piece. A lot of people didn't like it, but the, uh, the clothing on here is awesome. The mixed media is just amazing on this particular piece. And then we've got Lobo and his dog here. Pretty awesome piece, and right next to him, Omega Man, the first appearance of Lobo. And we've got the uh, Masters of the Universe, which uh, these are the only three that I'm going to collect. Uh, Skeletor, Evelyn, and He-Man. So, um, and then I've got the print in the back um, for that line from Sideshow. And then moving down here, we've got Voltron, maquette from Sideshow, pretty awesome piece. I actually really, really like this piece a lot. And um, got the three comics there over to the right and the uh, art print behind it. It's a highly detailed piece. It looks amazing. Uh, I actually put up a review of this guy uh, a month or so ago, a couple of months ago. And then we've got Phoenix, beautiful piece, but I'm really interested in the new Phoenix that XM is releasing. She looks pretty awesome. I kind of like the uh, non-see-through resin wings from the uh, the new one, but this one's absolutely beautiful too. And we're, and she's got an art print right there in the back. And then I've also got um, the Invincible Swordsman from Hong Kong Comics. This is a really beautiful piece as well. Really large piece. Um, and I've got the print there in the back with him. And then I think from last year. This is probably one of the most beautiful pieces released in terms of sculpt and um, portrait. She's absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is Magdalena from the uh, Top Cow universe. Absolutely beautiful, stunning piece. And right next to that comic is the uh, first appearance of uh, Witchblade. Man, this base, everything about this was really amazing. And then over here, right next to her, we've got Witchblade with her print behind her. I love that XM includes these prints with these... Um, uh, pieces. It's a really nice touch. 
and Witchblade is absolutely gorgeous. Um, really love this piece too. And then right next to her, of course, we've got the Darkness. Um, the Darkness was the first piece that I reviewed some time ago. I remember how nervous I was when I first started uh, doing this. And uh, you guys showed me a ton of love when it came to my first review, and I really appreciate it. And this piece still is my all-time favorite statue, period, bar none. It's amazing. The base, everything about it. Um, the little demons, darklings down there. It, the base doesn't overpower the figure, like some people say that some ex XM pieces do. I mean, these darklings are actually a part of him. Um, it's an incredible piece, and the way they detailed it highlighted that. Um, it was just flawless. I was so impressed with this. And of course his prints in the back as well. And then we've got the Black Panther, T'Challa. Another really beautiful piece from XM. Um, there were some things about the base that some people wanted the vegetation to be painted uh, a little bit more green. And I agree with that now. I, I saw that type of highlight on the um, statue, the um, Savannah's Windrunner, Rind Savannah's Windrunner statue. And of course, that's the uh, first appearance of uh, Black Panther in Fantastic Four. And then we've got my man, Caleb Nefson. This is an amazing piece, the Bat King. That's the uh, print that came with it. Um, just an epic piece. And I love his style because his style suits what I like to collect, this gothic type look. It looks amazing, an, an incredible piece. I can't wait till Thor comes out. And then down here, we've got what's left of my Universal Monster collection. I had all of them, but being in the military, moving a lot they ended up getting broken and I do want to get them all back but they're so expensive now and I just have Phantom and uh, the uh, Frankenstein monster now that's about it both still really great pieces this is one Sideshow did uh, they did an awesome job with their uh, mixed media and then here are the three dioramas that I have in here you've got Dark Side and um, Superman and then you've got the uh, hush scene, the tongue lashing, if you will, with Catwoman and Batman. And then you've got the uh, fight scene with Batman and the Killer Croc. That's the second edition. I don't have the first edition. It's pretty expensive to get, actually. But uh, these are some pretty cool dioramas. Wish I could get a better picture of Croc there. And then these are NECA figures of uh, Jason and, um, and Freddy, man. They look awesome. They look like statues, but they're not. But I love them. That's what I love about collecting. You can just collect what you like, and I do that. Those guys look amazing. And then you've got the two um, Ghost Riders, the original Ghost Rider there. And then I've got uh, on the left Johnny Blaze. And then the um, original comic from the original Ghost Rider. And then this is the Iron Man suit that broke apart in Iron Man 3, I think. I thought that was pretty cool. And, uh, and I've got Daredevil um, with a pretty cool comic there. I wish, Dare, I wish uh, Daredevil's um, batons or sticks or whatever were a lot bigger. They, they, I don't, how can you even hurt anybody with that? But anyway, this is the uh, collection of this side of the wall. Pretty neat. And now we'll start over here with my diorama here. This is Dracula vs. Blade, Sideshow. And then uh, we've got Crotus, uh, a NECA figure where he severed the head of Medusa. And then we got Medieval Spawn, pretty awesome piece there. And then some more Spawn uh, statues. I just really, I'm gonna go on a rant again, I guess, about wanting licensed image Spawn stuff. But anyway, Curse of Spawn, really nice piece. And then this is another Spawn piece. This one's pretty expensive to get now. It's around $600 to buy that. It's a pretty awesome piece right there. And uh, then um, we've got this rooftop Spawn, 20th uh, anniversary, I think it is or 10th anniversary, I'm not sure, it's one of them. And um, then this is a, a small statue from Daredevil, PVC statue, the uh, Netflix show. And then uh, I just thought this was just a really cool pose of, um, of a Deadpool. And then I've got here that is Lady Death. But um, right there is a really cool small figure of Spawn. The detail on that thing is absolutely sick. And uh, yeah, there's Lady Death right there. And then here, Magdalena, another beautiful piece by Claiborne Moore. I mean, this is a beautifully sculpted piece. She looks gorgeous. Um, one of my favorite characters from the Top Cow universe. I just hope they do Angelus. I can't believe they won't do her. They did the other three. 
there's Angelus right there. That's the um, bronze version of her, um, sculpted by Claiborne Moore as well. Beautiful piece. I get it in focus. Yeah, gorgeous. So XM, I need my Angelus and uh, my uh, Alien Vodka. <laughs> and this is Evil Ernie. Pretty uh, cool piece. Another piece by Clavin Moore. <laughs> Back in the 90s, he was the guy, and uh, that's when I started collecting statues uh, back then. And uh, besides Boeing, and they did a lot of um, DC and, and uh, Marvel stuff, but nobody was doing the, the types of things that I like to collect like this, the independent comic stuff. And uh, Claiborne Moore did a lot of that, which I really enjoyed. Uh, and then we've got the incredible statue from uh, Blizzard of Savannah's Windrunner. She is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful piece. And then um, this is a, a, a hand sculpted image of the Sandman, Neil Gaiman Sandman. This in the 90s was a hugely sought after piece, sometimes fetching as much as $1,500. Uh, not quite as much now, but it's a beautiful piece. I love it. I've had it for a very, very long time. Uh, and then that doll uh, from Spain, I don't know who made it. It's like a Dracula doll. It's all porcelain and I thought it was really cool. And uh, I just kind of display it with... Um, Vampirella here, another gorgeous piece by Sideshow, and then this is the second um, Lady Death that Sideshow produced, another beautiful piece, and uh, you've got Purgatory from Sideshow, awesome, and then this, I'm not a huge X-Men fan, I mean I don't really collect the comics, but this was such a beautiful piece, majestic. The wings are just amazing on it, and I think he fits really well in the genre that I love to collect. So, um, so I ended up picking this up. Just very happy I did. Just a beautiful piece from Legend, Lord of Darkness. This is um, a really awesome piece too. But I um, I was really interested in the PCS version as well, and. Um, and I didn't like the sculpt of that piece as much as I like this one, so I'm pretty much going to stick with this, even though I like the, the fact that it's one-third. And another uh, Blizzard piece, um, Illidan, Storm Rage, another beautiful piece by them. Very affordable. Detail insane. Just gorgeous piece. And right next to him is the very first premium format of Lady Death from Sideshow. Absolutely gorgeous piece. I remember in one of my other videos, I said back in the 90s, man, comics were all about busting butts. And she's definitely uh, an example of that. And so this is what the entire wall looks like before we move on. Give you a wide shot there. Now, Spider-Man. This is a Hot Toys Spider-Man, and I've got uh, artifacts. I think of uh, Venom there that he's fighting, and then the symbiote Spider-Man in the back with uh, some numbered editions from that McFarlane era Spider-Man. Uh, and of course, Deadpool and a bunch of other Deadpool stuff, uh, bobbleheads and different things. Uh, hot toys and down here though is some more um, Universal monster stuff the two here uh, Wolfman and the uh, Frankenstein monster those both are Claiborne Moore sculpts which were really awesome and then I got the Dracula like in 97 I think it was 96 98 it was one of the first pieces that I bought online from a I think the company at the time was called things from another world and I got that Dracula statue and here is the Spawn vs. Batman um, statue. Mine got broke there. Uh, but it's pretty hard to find this. I hardly ever see it come up. Pretty nice piece and a kind of cool artwork in the back there. And this is from Metacon. These figures uh, inspired by the Hush comic. One of my favorite Batman stories actually. Of course, we've got Superman and Batman here. And uh, at the top, they didn't, I, I'm surprised they didn't do Poison Ivy, but I, if they did, I don't know about it. I haven't seen it. Uh, the only ones I've seen so far are these five, which are um, the Joker and Harley Quinn and Catwoman. 
and of course Batman and uh, Superman. But I wish they had done Poison Ivy. She was such a big part of that story, uh, including Robin. I, I they should have done the whole line, I think. But the ones they did were pretty awesome. And uh, my mini Spider Verse here from uh, Artifacts. Um, Miles Morales, uh, Peter Parker, 2099, Spider Gwen, Spa, uh, we've got Carnage and um, Venom, and then uh, Spider Woman. And uh, the Samurai one is a Bandai figure that I got for Christmas. Pretty awesome. And then uh, Agent Venom, of course, in the back. And then we've got Christopher Reeves, Superman. A lot of people give this pose a bad rap. But hey, look, it's Christopher Reeves, man. I, I don't know. He's my Superman, so uh, I'm, I'm keeping it. So more Spawn figures, 12-inch figures that are highly detailed, beautiful figures. Again, my loving to have seen some of these sculpts in statue form um, would be awesome. I mean, this, you know, Gunslinger one here is just amazing. So many facets of it and detailed. I mean, it's just great. And then here, um, this Joker in the back, I got this some time ago, you know, like maybe 98 or something. But I had been wanting this for so long and it was just so expensive and I never bought it. And I finally was able to purchase that at a reasonable price. I just love the pose of him. Um, with that skull in his hand and um, they even made a mini version of it and of course this is the, the dance with the Joker and uh, Harley Quinn there's uh, that's the first edition there's two editions of that I think and then this Lino um, this will be my Lino I won't be getting the sideshow one but I don't have Mumra from Mumra from this line so I might get that from sideshow uh, but other than that you know the the new one it just I didn't like the liberties they took and uh, this is Vampirella again, uh, regular edition. I wish I had the exclusive with her head back on that. And then Disney was going to do a line of villains. And um, they did three and they stopped. They started with, uh, uh, this was the second one, Maleficent. She's absolutely uh, uh, gorgeous. I love the mixed media they did with these statues. They were just awesome. But they didn't do any more. I would love to have seen what the rest of these villains would have looked like. Um, as statues and then the very first one that came out was this was the evil queen I've got a pair with Jack an 18 inch NECA figure they look pretty good together I think um, so yeah I, I wish they had continued this line man to get some of these iconic Shafar and, and, and Scar some of these villains would have been awesome to put a collection together And that is the entire wall, including the detox that are in there. I had to do some custom building, building to get some of this stuff to fit. But now up here we have nothing but uh, NECA figures and one McFarland figure. Uh, my son kind of got me into the NECA thing because that's what he would buy me for Christmas on my birthday would be uh, a NECA figure. And uh, I thought they were just really cool, so I started collecting them. I don't have any specific line that I collect. I just see a figure that I like and I'll, I'll collect it. But that Edward Scissorhand, that's not actually a NECA figure. That's a McFarlane figure from his Monsters uh, a Horror line. So pretty cool stuff there. Little classic Batman car. Some alien predator action there. And then moving down here, we've got... Um, the Carnage Kamaket uh, with the uh, first appearances behind him, graded uh, with the uh, print that came with the exclusive one. And then um, uh, we've got um, Venom, of course, from uh, XM with the print there and uh, the premium format Spider-Man. Really love this Silver Surfer uh, maquette. I actually bought the... Um, Galactus bus just to go with it because I thought the print that came was so awesome and to display them now that thing is behind you I've got to figure out who, who drew that I bought that but I can't remember the artist and then we've got the Green Goblin and the um, Venom comic cat from Sideshow as well and the uh, print behind it I still think that that Venom is one of the best sculpted Venoms if not the best out there and there are some really good ones out there and this is the uh, third piece 
Captain Hook from the villain's line before they ended it. I wish they hadn't done that. Um, stop shaking the camera. <laughs> came with that uh, piece, the croc wasn't even exclusive, it just came with it. And of course that's X-Force Deadpool and uh, Gordon Freeman from my favorite video game, uh, Half-Life. I'm assuming there'll never be a Half-Life 3, Half-Life 2 is when they stopped. And then this is PCS's uh, Robocop. I wish I got an exclusive version of this because the arm is up, which allows it to fit in a detolf, but because his arm is straight out, it will not fit. Um, and then um, Iron Spider-Man, uh, which is just the mold of Back in Black, same exact same mold. Ex you know, they didn't do anything different other than paint it and add the tentacles. And then I think one of the best dioramas out there, the Hulk versus Wolverine diorama from Sideshow, still available. There's a lot of them made, but it's really worth it. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome piece. I know there's some custom heads out there that people have gotten as well, but I'm pretty happy with what I have. It's pretty cool. And then on the bottom, just random figures to take up space pretty much. Um, those are some spawn figures, our image figures, celebrating the like 20th anniversary of the company. But these are actually the first 12 inch figures that McFarlane did, which I really think that he changed the game when it came to figures. Uh, he did such a great job with his figures, uh, very collectible. And then that is a kit that I put together and oh my God, I tried to paint that. I'm not good at that type of stuff, it, it sucks. But I was in the military at the time in the uh, barracks board and I found it at a comic book shop <laughs> and, and did it. Wow, that was a long time coming. First of all, I wanna say thank you uh, for taking the time to watch my room tour, which has been a long time coming. Secondly, I wanna say thank you for getting us to a thousand subscribers and I thought this would be a really great thing to do, do a room tour. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, it's been a long time coming. So don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure you leave any comments down below. And also don't forget to head over to mcecentral.com where you can check out the latest happenings in the world of collecting. So until next time, peace.